Hey everybody, Patrick here with Rap Forward. It's December 10th, 2012, and this is Monday Night Paper. All right guys, time for some paintball news and industry trends. The Japan Cup 2012 was this past weekend. It was sponsored by Dai and Good Paintball in the town of Kuwana, Japan. Now the three biggest winners in their respective categories were Team Nidamago, Team Neki Kick, and Team Rai. Now Team uh, Nidamago was the winner of the Open Division, so they were the winner overall. Congratulations. A handful of paintball teams are banding together to raise some money to give some relief to the victims of Hurricane Sandy. Sandy Relief Weekend is getting kicked off on the 15th and 16th of December. They've already raised about $31,000 with the help of two professional paintball players, Nikki Kuba and Pete Utchig. So hopefully on the 15th and 16th, they can raise even more money to help give some relief to these families. Gearheads Paintball is a company known for their custom work and attention to detail, but they've never mass produced a product until now. Crystal Duval from the company has come out and announced their first mass produced product, which is going to be the Gearheads Paintball Feed Adapter for Spring Feeds. It's a cool little gadget. It's uh, designed for those pump guns. It uses a Spring Feed uh, paintball design. Uh, so go ahead and check that out if you're into pump action play. And hopefully, Gearheads, this one is going to be a very big success for you. Congratulations on taking a big step. Now paintball in South America is starting to get big. The Ecuadorian Professional Paintball League or EPPL just had a tournament this past weekend with 40 or so teams that showed up. Very cool. Congratulations to Team Evolution for winning Division 2 II and 3. And we at Rep 4 are very excited to see paintball growing in South America. Alright guys, it's time for this week's tactical tip. Now this one's actually going to be two tips in one. I was setting up this vest to show you guys uh, different places that you could uh, mount your pistol holster, your molly holsters, but we only sell the kind that are vertical. So I was setting this vest up with some zip ties to run the uh, pouch horizontal and I realized that might be a pretty cool tactical tip for those of you with your gear and you have a pouch that you'd like to have horizontal versus vertical, all you need is a few zip ties I'm going to show you how. Alright, so here I have the Rat 4 cross draw holster. Uh, this one's a righty because I'm a righty and this is in digital camo. Now like I said, this has the vertical molly straps on it. It's the only version we have, but if you have a few zip ties, it doesn't matter anymore. I'm actually going to mount this sideways to this vest using a handful of zip ties here. Okay, so step one is going to be to choose where you want to have your holster. Um, I'm going to put this just under this top molly loop um, right dead center there. Now I want to leave this exposed so I can have uh, my name tape and I can also get to my um, quick disconnect handle up here. So I'm going to put this front and center right there. So that means I'm going to be using the center four molly loops. Okay, so put this down for a second. All right, so what I'm going to do is loosely apply these zip ties. Now it doesn't really matter which way you have it. Um, but what I'm going to do is because I'm going to cut this off, the end of the zip tie might be a little bit sharp after I cut it. So I'm going to have that pointing away from you know, my face. I'm going to have that pointing down because I don't want to have anything scratch, uh, scratching me on uh, my chin or anything if I was to fall or whatever. Just trying to stay mindful of that. So I'm just going to put the zip tie here and very loosely, don't tighten it down yet. Okay, don't tighten it down. Just real loose. I'm going to put these on here. Okay, so I have four zip ties there across the front. They're uh, very, very open so that I can, I can use them later. Remember, zip ties, you can't loosen it, you can only tighten it. So I don't want to get uh, too far ahead of myself. I'm going to grab the holster and unbutton it from the back, like so. Now these zip ties are basically going to act like your molly loops from here on out. Um, so what you're going to do is put molly loops in there, weave them through just like you would, and leave them loose. Don't tighten them down yet. You're going to do that last. Okay, so that's one. So you can see that. It's one through there. I'm going to finish up with the rest.
Okay, so I went ahead and snapped the two snaps on the end. Now, as you can see, it's, uh, the zip ties are still loose, so it's still standing off from the vest. Now, you go ahead and tighten those zip ties. Now, do them um, in one direction. Don't start from the sides and in. You kind of might get yourself all messed up doing that. So start from one end, go to the other. And um, if you want to take any steps, go ahead. Because remember, if you, if you mess this up, you'll have to start all over. So I'm going to start on the left. And just slowly tighten that down. But I'm not going to go all the way yet. And I'm going to follow up with the others. All right, there you go, guys. Now it's mounted on there. It's just as tight as if it had molly loops. And the last step is to cut these off. Now, because I had the excess pointing downwards, now it's kind of tucked nice and neat under there. It'd be pretty difficult for me to scratch myself on that even if I wanted to. So it's a pretty good uh, safety step. Just think about um, what could go wrong. Um, so this looks pretty safe to me. I'm comfortable with it. Slip these off. And then we can get to this week's tactical tip which is holster placement for your molly vest. All right guys, so like I said, I'm gonna be using this RAP4 cross draw holster. Uh, this is the small version in digital camo, and it has a Ram X50 inside. Now on this USMG um, armor vest, I have it mounted here to the front using those zip ties so it can go horizontal. And the reason that I have seen a lot of these pistols mounted there, uh, in the military at least, was because uh, we did a lot of mounted operations. We're getting in and out of uh, vehicles, and especially the driver whose job it is to stay in the vehicle. Um, usually you'd see them with a pistol on their chest because it's a lot easier to get to from inside a vehicle, and for the driver, it's conveniently already pointed out the window. So um, your draw would be just a few inches to the right and then back out the window. Um, this is also uh, seen a lot by people who just have a ton of kit on or if for some reason they're going to be a gunner or some, somewhere that their legs aren't going to be as accessible for them. I've seen this on the chest a lot. Now um, I've also seen this on a paintball field most recently um, Kusha from Savoy 6 he mounts his paintball pistol in that spot and he's got his reasons for that. Um, I think the reason might be because there's really no more room for it than anywhere else. Uh, the guy likes to have a lot of kit. Uh, but for this, I would recommend this if you're in some kind of a vehicle situation or in a really tight, um, tight compact area where you can't really get down to a belt or down to a thigh rig. Alright guys, so moving on down to the hip. Now here on this USMG battle belt, I have the same cross draw holster and digital camo with a P99 inside and it's mounted to the molly on the outside of the battle belt. So a uh, few benefits to this, this is actually my preferred method and the reason for that is movement. When you're running, your hips are actually moving in the direction that you're running, but they're moving kind of smoothly. They're not jerking back and forth like your knee or your leg is when you're running. Um, so it actually stays pretty stable. You won't feel the pistol, the way the pistol fighting you as you run. Also, um, you won't need to tighten down a belt as much as you would need, need to do so to like a thigh rig or something. This belt, because your hips get wider as they go down, the gravity is just going to keep it nice and snug on you. Um, some people ask, you know, should you attach it to you know, the belt that's holding up your pants to keep it from twisting? I actually haven't really had my battle belt twist on me hardly at all. So um, unless that's happening to you, and it's, you need to find a solution for it. But for me, that's never been a problem. Um, a lot of police officers prefer to carry it on their hip just because, I mean, for them it's more of a tradition, I'm sure, but it's a lot more comfortable during long periods to like wear a belt versus something strapped to your leg. Um, the thigh rigs, you kind of have to tighten them down really, uh, really far to um, keep them nice and snug and keep it from moving on you, especially when you're running around. After a while, like it starts to work almost like a tourniquet on your leg and it gets really uncomfortable and depending on where you're at, pretty sweaty underneath there. So um, the belt is definitely the most minimal way to wear a pistol. It doesn't need to be on a battle belt either. These Molly um, holsters will attach to even the belt that's, that's holding up your pants. Um, so that's a good solution if you don't want to get any more kit. If you just want to go out there with what you're wearing and just clip it on, there you go. You don't need any more equipment other than the holster itself. All right, guys, so moving on to thigh rigs. Now, this is the most common kind of holster that I've seen, whether it's in the military or on the paintball field. Um, this is the most popular by far, and I think it has a few reasons. First of all, what I mentioned with the uh, where, when you mount it to your hip, you don't need to buy much kit for this. You just need the holster itself. This holster will attach to the belt that's holding up your pants. You don't need any kind of tactical gear to use it other than the holster itself. 
Also, it's a pretty good spot for it because uh, when your hands are at your side, a lot of people, that's exactly where their pistol is. They don't have it low enough where they have to reach for it. Actually keep it right where your hand is all the time. It's a very natural way to, uh, to draw your sidearm. Also, it frees up space on your belt if you wanted to have more kit. If you wanted to have pouches all over the place on this belt, um, then that move that out of the way. Whereas it's tough to have too many pouches on a drop blade platform because it just gets kind of heavy and bulky and kind of gets in your way. A couple of drawbacks of the thigh rig and why I've moved away from it over the years is uh, mostly comfort, actually. After a while, I get really sick of that thing strapped to me. Um, down so tight that it doesn't move, it starts to work like a tourniquet on my leg, cuts off circulation, it's just uncomfortable in general. Um, also, it gets kind of hot underneath. These uh, holsters that we sell, we pay a lot of close attention to the underside of it to make sure there's nothing you know, pokey coming out of it when it's pressed up against your thigh. But I've seen a lot of holsters out there that have tags or seams or, or something like that that's sticking out towards your person. And when that's strapped down, you know, tight enough so it doesn't move much, but it still moves a little bit. I mean, that's just like blister USA, like waiting to happen. So be careful when you're buying a, uh, a thigh rig. Uh, make sure to check out the inside because that's going to be pressed right up against you. So that's also kind of a downside if you don't have a good holster. These ones, these ones are really good. Uh, but also another problem with this is movement. If you're in a full sprint and you got a pistol attached to a thigh rig and you're, I mean, you're seriously stretching your legs out and moving, um, that pistol is going to be fighting you the whole time. It's going to want to go straight to the ground. So unless you have it secured in there really well, it's going to drop. Now, I would recommend this for anywhere you mount your pistol to have a lanyard on it. Um, there's been a few times, embarrassing moments uh, during a deployment where my pistol actually fell to the ground because of this kind of situation and um, I ended up dragging it a couple feet before I realized because it was too loud or I was out of it or I was just being dumb um, but it definitely happened so if you don't yet go ahead and get pistol lanyard there's actually some mounting places on the backs of these pistols for that so drop leg definitely the most common most popular um, preferred by, by well, like most people uh, but has a couple of drawbacks that you can get around mounting it somewhere else. So guys, that was your tactical tip. And remember that we uh, choose these tips off of our Facebook page. So if you'd like to see anything in next week's episode, just go to facebook.com slash rep4usa and let us know. All right, guys, now I'm going to hand over the stage to Murphy from Savoy 6, who's going to talk about his experiences with paintball rocket launchers. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Murph with Savoy 6. I want to talk about rocket launchers today how they're used in scenario paintball, do's and don'ts and things like that. So the, just for the intent of this uh, video, we're going to be going over the Alias MKX, just because it's the one I have. So I'm going to go into detail on this one and uh, answer any questions you may have about it. So you can use any kind of air. You want HPA, CO2. I have an adapter with 12 grams on it right now. You can, I've run a remote line off of it in the past. So it's uh, whatever you have, really. It, this thing's pretty versatile. So you have that. Was it fire? So you got a couple different rockets you can use. Uh, bar none, you're going to want to use these mini Vortex. They're awesome. They're uh, really durable. They're going to take a lick and keep on going. Uh, the fins aren't going to rip off, which is a problem you'll have sometimes with the cheaper brands and just a cheaper make. You, know, you might pay a buck fifty for them. But if the tail fin rips off and the thing just goes, you know, at a 90 degree angle, you know, you, know, you want quality, sometimes you gotta pay for quality. So it's harder to find them sometimes. So just be aware of that. So another thing you can use, these guys, actually I like them. Uh, some people have, uh, you know, they don't like them. Some, they either ah, cheaper. Hey, these things are pretty tough. Uh, just be aware of them when you're packing them and putting them in your gear bag. Uh, this tail fin may rip off on you, so, uh, but once you're uh, firing it and you're playing with it in the field, it, it'll keep on going. It's pretty good, and the tip is hollow, so you can put a paintball, a 68 cal paintball in there so you can mark your target, and uh, it's pretty good. So I've had good experience with these. I like them, and it's, it's pretty cheap. It's only like two bucks or something like that, so if I do lose it in the field, I'm not out that much money. The mini Vortexes, it's a little bit more of an investment, and if you go to a big game field and you put yours in a big uh, community pool and you don't get them back, you know that's a that's a loss from your pocketbook. So it's uh, ultimately it's your choice. And just be aware when you're firing some that have the uh, whistles on them, 
Uh, this thing is going to shoot two inch diameter footballs. Um, this football is two inches in diameter, but it has quarter inch whistles on either side. So I've had to take them off and it uh, shortens the distance it can fire. So just be aware of that. So uh, safety. Obviously you're not going to want to take a headshot uh, on somebody with one of these. Uh, you, you shouldn't say it, or shouldn't need to say it, but you do. Uh, just be safe with these things. Always ask permission from the paintball field uh, before you take it out because you don't want to surprise them. This thing looks pretty gnarly and you don't want to upset anybody. So ask permission, make sure they're cool with it. If it's a scenario or a big game, they generally are. If it's just regular walk-on play, they're probably going to say no or they're going to want to see limited use with it. So some fields do let you use this during walk-ons. I've used it in the past. Just ask. Call them ahead of time just so they can kind of have some time to wrap their head around it. Usually when you put somebody behind the eight ball, they're going to say no just uh, out of precaution. Safety first. So this, you can barrel load it or you can uh, open the breech. So uh, if you're in a time crunch, you're probably going to cram it down the barrel, but you get a better shot if you take the, uh, the extra time and cram it in there. But it gets a little uh, snug sometimes. So it's just easier to barrel load. But we'll uh, do a couple test shots, show you. Make sure that you uh, do kind of an offset aim a little bit when you're firing, just so you can compensate. All right, we'll do another shot. This time I'll uh, barrel load it like that. Sometimes you're going to get that erratic shot. It happens. As you can see with the uh, mini vortex, that thing was straight as an arrow. So uh, sometimes it's, it's worth the extra uh, couple dollars. Just make sure with that trigger, trigger pull, you fire and release, because if you hold it, you can hear the air leaking out the barrel. With 12 grams, you're gonna get about two shots out of it. With uh, a larger tank, you can fire all day long. I use a uh, 13 cubic inch um, Ninja tank. Uh, 3,000 PSI is pretty awesome. I enjoy it. I use it all weekend uh, when we do the big game stuff. So, hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully it answered some questions. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and post them on the video. The Savoy 6 is our flagship team. They get a lot of our prototype markers to go ahead and test. And you can see a lot of the pictures and videos of those products being used on their Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Savoy 6 Paintball. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Now remember, Monday Night Paintball is your show. We make it from the content generated from our Facebook page, so if there's anything you'd like to see, just go to facebook.com slash rap4usa and let us know. Look forward to hearing from you, and we'll see you out there.